Let's put it this way. I'm glad you said it first. Okay, get on the intercom to the passengers. We are changing course for the Bahamas. If you cut the taxes down, what will end up is companies making more money. But not to create more jobs, no. To make more money for their stockholders. That is the end result. And uh, uh, then it's way less tax income for the government there. And what will happen is they have to cut the social programs, schools, hospitals, kindergartens, all that stuff gets cut because there is less money in the pot. So we're actually able to brainwash the people here in a way that they think if they vote Republican that they vote for freedom or vote for a better America or something like this. But they don't. Like everybody who doesn't have a hundred million dollars or more who votes Republican is a completely idiot. Like completely out of their fucking mind. You see all that sports bus. It's also part of the machine that people sitting there like stupid idiots watching golf 24 hours. It's a big miracle for me. How can you watch golf? Think about it. It's like so boring, right? Look at the reviewers. The reviewers changed too in the last 10 years, 15 years. From people that actually watched some stuff with substance, right? To reviewers now. They started the whole film reviewing experience with Star Wars you know they think that is the classic I mean I watched such as Kane or Rio Grande or whatever that are the classics you know I mean it, it is the thing it's like a, it's, a, it's a total generation shift and the people don't do their homework anymore don't forget I born 1965 so maybe 1975 1980 1985 this game was 40 years old at that point but I wanted to see it or the other John Huston movies, the other the Howard Hawks movies. So you, you, you kind of get, know where, where uh, the importance was on, on directors from day one of the film industry till now. And, and they don't have that. For them, they, one of the film industry was 18. They read that stuff in the newspapers and also believe on it. They believe that Avengers is a good movie because in the newspapers, is written it's a good movie they're even acting with the winter soldier or stuff like this like they mean anything you know but you know what means something that are the speeches from bill williamson in rampage 2 because there was not one other movie done at all who nails the world we're living in better as the speeches of bill williamson in rampage 2 if you don't deliver the action nobody at all watches it the movie theater is over there i don't think it really aged or something i think it's uh, uh, it, it's still really really funny and uh, yeah I, I hope you enjoy it you've made comedies war films plenty of horror movies action but it seems that a consistent theme in your movies is anger even when you're doing stuff that's funny it's it's very confrontational and angry is, is that yeah. would you say that's accurate and where does that come from? Yeah, but, but yeah, because uh, I, I mean, in, in retrospective, of course, and nothing came from alone, right? So I always had to fight for my projects to get them financed, to get them done. And when people ask me, uh, uh, like, um, to, the shooting of the movies, like Blood Rain, for example, we had various problems, like Michael Madsen was always drunk. Uh, <laughs> you know, and then Ben Kingsley said, I'm not playing in the scene with him where he has a sword in his hand, and then, Stuff like this, but for me that was all like the easy part, in a way, right? Because I, I never had a problem with actors. Uh, I'm just straightforward, and I let them do their job. I'm not a director who acts in front of them like this is how you have to uh, play the scene. Like 
uh, you know, I, I expect to, to have professionals uh, uh, on set. And, uh, but th that was the, the real struggle is really what, we, what I did then over the time is selling the movies on my own worldwide and creating really my own distribution system with people I know and, and uh, uh, that was the real hard work and that is like when, when now young filmmakers, I mean we were on a festival here and a lot of people starting with their first movies, at that point there was Blockbuster, there was the video stores, there, there was a different kind of distribution you could get for a genre movie or you could get and look for example uh, uh, in the name of the king was Jason Statham uh, flopped like in the in the box office it did like six seven million dollars box office in other countries maybe another five six million <laughs> is a disaster but it did 40 million in DVD you know like 40 million dollars in DVD that is gone now and that DVD money makes now only Avengers and this kind of movies if you have a, a little genre movie your DVD sales will be twenty thousand dollars that is the world we're living in right and that is the real reason of course I retired it's not like I don't want to make movies anymore. I, I, I love movies and I want to make movies, but it just doesn't work anymore to refinance the movies in the, in the digital world. You know, like if you had 100,000 turns at Blockbuster, they gave you $250,000, $200,000. If you have 100,000 turns on iTunes, they give you $4,000. That is the difference, right? And that is basically for independent film, a total disaster. I mean, all my friends in Vancouver, I mean, I'm living in Vancouver, and they are so busy as, like, you know, all the, f the people I have, like my third AD is now production manager, you know, like, it's like everybody makes money, is busy, because in Vancouver everybody shoots, but what is what they're shooting? Serious for ABC, serious for Netflix, ser serious, serious, serious. You will basically find almost no independent films anymore shot. And, and that is, for me, like uh, uh, the sad thing right now. Because I think independent movies in the history, genre movies and non-genre movies were the backbone of film. They drove film forward and made film history. And a lot of movies that were like discarded, whatever, later turned into very important movies. You know, I always think like, what is the movies you remember when you, when you grow up, whatever, mostly genre movies. You know, I remember Rio Grande, El Dorado, like that stuff, but I don't remember the art house movie from the 60s I saw from Eric Romare in the film festival. You know, but that are the movies that got all the prizes and they got all the, the glory and all, you know, like that is the thing. They, they got all of this, but now, 20, 30 years later, you still can watch Jaws from Steven Spielberg, you know, and it's still an amazing movie, but a lot of movies you, you watched at one time and you felt like, uh, okay, but what is now, uh, I mean, you know, like you know that movie is not important, but it was made important from the A-list festivals and from the, uh, uh, the, the, the surrounding uh, distribution with it, you know, and, and so now you have like this kind of popcorn, Avenger, Superman, Batman, like one after the other, and on the other hand, you, you, you have TV shows, you know, and, and the, 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 the real nice movies are good movies, uh, are dying off, and it's it's like less and less, and uh, all the, the 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 distributors who who come <coughs> produce this kind of more arty good movies are going under. Right. You know, I tell you, the Weinstein's in two three years, it's over. Like the all was, I said, relativity goes bankrupt eight years ago, and boom, that went bankrupt because that mess. That if you make a twenty million dollar movie right now with Matthew McConaughey, you will make five million dollars uh, recruitment. That will be it. Because everybody who will take that movie says we have to spend millions to release that movie in our country. We give you a little MG only, and then you get the money when it's a success. But look, the free state of Texas over there, I just watched on Netflix. Yeah, but look, that is $40 million burned. Boom, that will be gone. <laughs> and, then, and there are a lot of people in their business with a lot of deep pockets, like Larry Ellison, the kids are doing movies. But uh, they constantly burn money. And I'm not A, so rich, and <laughs> B, also not in a position to say, look, I keep burning money. And that was the real reason after the Rampage 3, after that last Rampage movie, I said that will be uh, the last movie. And uh, if it's not changing again, you know, uh, then uh, I, I actually don't know how to make another movie. Uh, and, and so that was it. But it's important to look at the old stuff. And uh, I mean, it's not what you will see Postal. And, uh, that was the good times where you could have a like kind of a crazy movie like Postal made with over ten million dollars budget. 
So in Postal, you will see a lot of scenes that are big, you know, we had big action scenes, big explosions, and a lot of sets, a lot of different actors, and that would be in today's time also completely impossible. Okay. Yeah. Are there any uh, fil filmmakers here, any burgeoning filmmakers? You feeling pretty excited and hopeful right now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you see, like, is there a possibility that, that you can imagine that this is going to improve or change in some way? Some Shit. Yes, I think that the, the key what, what has to happen is you get a fair share of online distribution and you get actually more money uh, out of it, you know? It's also the same with that uh, class action suits against YouTube. That is important. Like, my movies are watched over 250 million times on YouTube total. Like, all my movies, right? And we always file as soon an illegal thing on YouTube pops up, they shut it down. When I you know, we send an email, they shut it down. But till they shut it down, it's 40,000 times watched. And, and so, and that is like the thing, what is like, where is the penalty for this? You know, because that uh, makes YouTube, as an example, huge. Right. That is why they get so much advertising money, and that is why, why, why they, uh, the stockholders of YouTube uh, are fucking billionaires now, but because they never shared the wealth with the content they presented for free to everybody. And that is a, it's a big legal issue because it doesn't help me if they shut it down and then another guy puts it up and they shut it down and another guy puts it up and they shut it down because then basically I lost any chance to make money on iTunes, for example. You know, so and that, that is the thing where uh, uh, this kind of, of things and then you have other companies like Hulu, they give you also revenue share, but you never really see uh, how can you know. You know, if they say, oh, it was only $400 for you. But who knows, maybe they made $45,000 on the movie, but they give you 400 because how you really can prove how many people watch that thing on Hulu, you know? So, and that, that is the thing. Netflix pays you advance money, what is an advantage, but they also, like, they paid for Rampage 3 $75,000. You know, they give Adam Sandler $30 million to shoot the shittiest movies of his career. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then uh, they give me $75,000. Uh, for a movie, like, but but how you want to make a movie with seventy five thousand dollars? I mean, it's uh, I mean, you are a young filmmaker, so you maybe made a movie for seventy five thousand dollars, but you cannot make a real movie for seventy five thousand dollars with paid people, you know. And I made too many movies. For me, nobody works for free anymore, and they're also way too busy to work for free. So that is the thing. It's like it's impossible, you know. I, I think the minimum budget to make a. a, a a movie is like eight, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars, basically. Uh, under it, it's it's almost impossible to make a ninety minutes uh, movie without big action sequences, but with whatever some some suspense. But when things come back, you might as well also, right? Like Absolutely. With, great. Okay. Yeah. Good. So enjoy Postal. <laughs> I will watch a little. Uh, uh, visit. And look, if you see Dave fully naked in that movie, don't run. It's only a quick scene, <laughs> only to warn everybody. I'll also say that. I think it's really funny. Uh, but I, I, it was not in the script, but he did it. I'm, curi I'm curious yeah. to know, I've got one of that yeah. cool. What is your favorite project that you've ever worked on? That is what we watched tonight. There was various movies that were horrific to shoot, like all the Blood Rain movies were uh, shitty food, shitty weather, uh, like huge problems. You, like Blood Rain 2, we. By, uh, by accident, uh, burned down half of a uh, uh, Wild West city. It was the biggest uh, insurance case I ever had on a movie. Uh, on, on In the Name of the King 2 with Dolph Lundgren, we had a, a gas explosion where like 13 people were blown away and under fire. We had to tackle the people on the ground to put the flames out. That was the biggest, second biggest uh, insurance case I had. Uh, so you go through a lot of shit, right? So there was an episode, like for example, on Blood Rain in Romania, Michael Madsen was really out of control, right? So, and he came, he, uh, he had a bodyguard, and then one night he bought two guns and came at two o'clock in the night with the guns in my trailer, totally hammered. Look what I bought. And I, <laughs> I only tried to turn him around out of my trailer. I said, look, we have to go to the set. I have to show you something on the video village. And then I told the, the when we walked, uh, I told the bodyguard, like, you grab the gun on the left, I grab the gun on the right, <laughs> oh and then uh, if that doesn't work, you're fired, right? So, and, and, uh, so it worked because he was not really re registered. I said, can I see that gun? And so I took it away. And uh, I mean, there were like various things where we had like, uh, uh, like adventurous disasters, right? On, in the name of the king, we shot in the mountains in Canada, and then me, the DP, and the uh, 
producer, Dan Clark, we went up with a helicopter on top of a mountain, and then we're, all the actors were supposed to come, Christiana Loken, Jason Stassen, helicopter went, nothing. Phone didn't work, nobody came. Like for hours and hours and hours, we're like on top of the mountain, like what the fuck? I cannot <laughs> believe it. And I saw already, okay, we cannot stay overnight here. So we started walking down because there was a storm under the clouds, like we were above, right? So, and the helicopter was not flying anymore, and, but nobody could tell us. So they had already a guy on the, on the horse basically trying to get up as fast as he can and to walk in our direction. But we were then walking through the clouds down and could see there was a, a big storm. So there was uh, stuff like this, if you I made over 30 movies, so you have a lot of that anecdotes. What is in later, funny. <laughs> you know, but if you're in a situation, you think I lose a shooting day, we spent tons of money, and at the same time, uh, I mean, what is the, what is going on here, basically, right? So, and uh, in Romania, the, the most disgusting thing I ever saw was like a we were driving, and there was a, a cross section, and a huge like huge truck drove into a horse carriage, and you saw really the horse was flying in a thousand pieces, and uh, the driver was flying from the horse carriage. We, we went in the mud and everywhere, and. Uh, I don't know, I think it was also dead. And uh, sort of, <laughs> it was like a full on mega crash. And on uh, that mercenary note, I, uh, I think there is no better time to cue a tribute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Thank now you. you have it, good play. So, so <laughs> much for being here. Let's get a round of applause. Look how much money that festival has. <laughs> okay. So more sponsors as like unbelievable. Uh, unfortunately, that's that's a conflicting report. <laughs> Welcome to the fourth annual Chattanooga Film Festival. Respect cinema. I'm here. Little Germany with its owner and controversial film director Uwe Boll. Uwe. It's from Postal. Why are you sure? Video games into hit movies. when I don't do any movies anymore. And if this is a result that you have 10% of the people, they say, we really loved his movies, and he was great, and he was a great guy, and so on, and 90% says I was the Edward of the new generation, it's in the end better, as you have 100% of the people say, the guy is a mediocre filmmaker.
Send it to me, but uh, uh, that is great. 